everyone, welcome to eNow Software's Link and Skype Connectivity Deep Dive webinar presented by Link MVP Johan Delleman. We will begin with a brief word from CEO and technical founder of eNow Software, Jay Gundotra. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is the first webinar of a new technical series that was recently launched. We hope that you find today's content not only informative, but that you walk away with some practical tips that will make your job of supporting Link Server easier. Follow us on Twitter at eNow Consulting to learn about future webinars. Link Server is one of Microsoft's fastest growing products. The recent announcement of Link being rebranded to Skype for Business took many by surprise and also raised a lot of questions. For example, how can companies today integrate Skype with Link and take advantage of all the benefits? To answer these questions and many more, I'm happy to introduce Johan Delimond. Johan has been working with Link Server the Link Server product, excuse me, since the OCS days. He is also a Link MCM and has been awarded the Link Most Valuable Professional Award for five years in a row. Johan, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Nice talking to you. And I'm very excited to have this uh, webcast for you because it's uh, really interesting to have Link and Skype talking to each other and having great interrupt possibilities. So it is a deep dive session, so I will go over some very, very technical stuff. Um, I will try to explain as much as possible without you having to know all of this, but I will prove you some stuff, and you will see that the integration, it's called V2 in this, in this part, but essentially adding video is the second part of making Skype and link connectivity a reality. There has been so many changes, so this is a real good introduction to do this. So, like I said, or like Jay said, my name is Johan Deliman. I'm from Belgium, so it's, 20, it's 8 o'clock p.m. my time. Um, but I'm very happy to be here with you. So, first I want to, okay, I have to take over as a presenter, so. Okay, so first of all, I want to mention uh, our user group. I'm actually uh, part of a user group. It's called ProChange, ProLink, ProOffice 365. We do have some very interesting content over there, and we also do some regular uh, events. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are offline, uh, but again, we sometimes do online events as well. I just wanted to mention it because there is uh, very interesting blog, and you can have lots of information on there. I'm also blogging on the eNow blog, so there's also very interesting stuff over there. So let's go over the agenda. So first of all, I need to talk about Skype and Link, because many people say, well, I have Skype, why should I need Link, and vice versa. Uh, well, they're two different products, and I will explain a little bit why you potentially want to have both of them, or in drop at least. Um, and of course, if you're talking about interop, uh, whether it's version one or version two, I still need to talk about the basics because you need to do some stuff on your link deployment if you want to do this, whether you're on Office 365 or you have a link on-premise deployment. So I also will talk about version one and I will do a demo uh, and, and also about version two, of course, and you will see the difference. I will drill down into the technical details, why it's so different and why Microsoft put in so much work to make it happen. And uh, well, now it's very, very good uh, implementation, I think. And finally, I do have some resources to share with you. So let's dive in. Skype on link. So yeah, this slide actually moves a little bit too fast. So I will talk about link. So link is not just some communication product. It has a lot of business value in there and some business features like audio conferencing, video conferencing, web conferencing, it's all within the link product. Of course, we have instant messaging and telephony. Well, telephony is a big big growth factor for link. Um, it's becoming so popular um, that, well, in the near future, it might be the number one telephone uh, product out there. Of course, voicemail is not coming directly from link, but we inter interrupt with voicemail on the exchange side. So to bundle all of this, Link simplifies 
and unifies the different tools people use to communicate at work. So it's important to understand it's it's a work tool. So it's well we dive in, into Skype a little bit later, uh, but it's transforming business communications because we have one tool to do everything and it's so integrating to everything that it's an awesome tool. So looking at Skype, Skype is essentially a product for everyone. So everyone can use it. It's not just for businesses and most likely it's not really targeted for businesses, but usually for people-to-people uh, -people communication. And a lot, many people use it, of course, to communicate overseas with families, relatives, with also with business partners, of course. But it's a different angle. So if we compare both of those products, um, it depends what you use, but then it's specialized by your need. If you're a consumer or you're a business, you will have different needs. Because if you're a consumer, most likely you will not do any dialing conferencing with audios and telephones, but if you are an enterprise, you probably want to do that. But the important thing is you can have Skype, and we have full link for the enterprise, and we can merge both worlds together. As long as we can participate and, and communicate to each other, we have a universal communication platform. So it really doesn't matter what the type of device or end user or whatever you are. You, you can even do it via browsers. So the idea is to have a universal communication platform that, that is capable of delivering for everyone. So I hope this is a valuable explanation what this link in Skype and the difference between that. So what other information is there available? So and in the last year, uh, Skype has announced so many different things. I'm not going to run all over them, but if you see on the bottom part, and I will actually use my pointer. So if you look at the bottom part, you will see okay, pointer. OK, so I put up a blog post, uh, like probably it was last week, I guess. And I have made an explanation about all these uh, announcements. But of course, probably the most important ones, and certainly I'm going to talk about, are uh, video calling between Skype and Link. And I'm, I'm also doing an extra blog post around this, which accompanies this webcast. Of course, this one is also very important. I'm going to briefly talk about it, but just to set the scene, not really to drill into it. So you see all the other invites or announcements. So there is a lot of value in there. So just to set the scene, Skype for Business, what is it and what is it not? So Skype for Business is not the consumer product, adding some value in there, like uh, capabilities for dialing phone numbers, PSTN numbers. It, Skype for Business essentially is Link. It's a familiar experience for the users who love Skype, but in the back end, it's all Link. So Skype for Business is still Link. So don't forget, um, well, it's, it's very important because people might have different expectations. So it will be delivered uh, somewhere in the first half this year. I don't really know the exact date, but probably in the Microsoft Ignite conference, where Ino will also be uh, participating, you will probably get to know more information about this. So it's a new interface a little bit. It, it resembles more like Skype. Uh, but it still is all the features you know and love from Link. So you can do full screen, audio, video integration into Office suites, which, which Skype actually don't have. But uh, so the important message here is uh, Skype for Business is our well-loved Link version. But of course, this is version next version. And then, of course, this this webcast centers around the video calling between Skype and Link and uh, the announcement Microsoft made uh, regarding this. So now that we have set the scene and, and did the introduction, now we can drill into the basics. 
So first of all, and I'm not going to explain everything on here because I expect some of you or most of you actually to know already all of this, but it's it's maybe a recap. So in order to have Link and Skype connectivity, first of all, you need to have this provision. So it's not something that will automatically pop up if you have Link. You need to do something because you need a license for that um, and you have to request it in this specific website. Um, okay. Um, going to use my pointer again. So this specific website, picklink.com, you can request this uh, connectivity setup. So expect this to, well, maybe three to four weeks in order to provision. And of course, very important here, certificates. Uh, we all know link and certificates, it's very important. Uh, we need public certificates, so you need to pay for them for public certificate providers in order to have this communication going. But this should be general knowledge, because if you're doing federation with other parties, you also need a public certificate. And of course, also the policies, because you need to specify whether a specific person can do federation, can do Skype intro OPS or no. It's all we have to configure. Now, there is in Node, Node 1, you see if you have Messenger connectivity. So in the old days, we had Messenger, Live Messenger, which was also provisioned exactly the same way. So if you have still this capability running, Skype will most likely also work because this is exactly the same steps. So it does not cost you anything, although you need a license. But of course, if you have a link, you already need a license. But if you have a license, you are eligible to do the uh, link Skype control. So this is actually the website, and you have to enter your details. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone can see it, but you have to fill in some information over here. So this is actually the, the FQDN of your Edge server. So Microsoft will check whether this is a valuable or a uh, a correct configuration, so it will check the FQDN, will check the certificates, will check DNS requirements, and if all of this works, uh, it will pop up or it will work in three to four weeks. So in order to do this, you obviously have to configure some policies for link on-premise, but if you do this for link online, it's very easy. You just have one checkbox, you enable it, and voila, you have it up and running. So that's very, very easy. Although the the admin help is not updated yet, because video conversations are in the not available section, so they will have to be moved. I'm not sure. Maybe it has been updated today, but I have checked uh, last week. So just one checkbox. It's more than one checkbox for link on-premise. But it's quite straightforward if you know how to do federation in link. That's quite easy. Now, another important factor is now that we have set up everything, still on the client side, you need to do something specific. Um, although you don't have to do it on the Skype side, if you leave everything by default, it, it's, it's, it's going to work. Although you are potentially able to change some of the privacy settings and potentially you are blocking invites from, from a link client. So, on the link side, it's essentially a little bit clearer. So what you have to do is, for example, um, tell me if someone adds me to his or her contact list. So if a Skype user adds a link user to the contact list, you want to be informed. Although you can say, like, for example, um, if you specify that only um, or you're going to block all invites in communication, you may, might, may have, might have a problem there because uh, only people on your contact list will be able to, to contact you. So this is quite important because if you want to connect to someone on Skype and on Link, if the settings are not uh, correct, then potentially you won't be able to see the presence and you won't be able to chat or call anyone. So it's quite important to understand this can happen, although you don't have any uh, impact on how other people are configuring their clients, of course. Um, you as an organization can, of course, control this centrally for Link, not for Skype, of course. Now, 
One of the most important things uh, to understand is that we need the MSA, so the Microsoft account. If we don't use the Microsoft account, we are not able to do the interoperability between Link and Skype. So you have to select this option because we have another option over here. So that's the Skype name. If you use only Skype name, you will not be able to communicate with with Link. So it's important that you do this. So the Microsoft account actually comes from a Hotmail account or an Outlook.com account or uh, an older Messenger account. You can all reuse them for Skype. And luckily, you can actually merge your Skype account and your MSA account. Um, so in the interface, usually you have the option to merge both of them. So important to not to forget because if people, other people you want to communicate with on a mobile device, tablet, or anything else, and they don't use the MSA, Microsoft account, well, you're not able to communicate. It might be a difficult story. Um, but Microsoft is working on making it better so that people also can use their Skype ID. But I, I don't have a clue when, whenever this is going to be available, which is a good thing, actually, because then we make sure that we can connect to everyone. And of course, if you don't have an account, you can just sign up. So how do we actually do this? Add a contact from link to Skype. Uh, well, don't forget the MSA. We have to be logged in into a Microsoft account. Then just search for a user. So I have some screenshots how to do this. So essentially, I'm typing here the link zip address which is usually the email address. Um, it's not necessarily the same, but usually it is. So it, that makes it easy for you to search. So then you search, and you will get the result. And notice that it says link in here. So Skype already knows this is a link account. So we're actually going to connect to this account, and we're going to add it to our contacts. And then, of course, we have to wait because we actually said, uh, I want this person to be on my contact list, but the invite is actually going to the link user. So he has to accept this, and you will see this in a later slide. So we wait until the user accepts, and then we see link, and the user is online, and then we can make audio call or a video call if it's enabled, and you have the right client. So. How does this look on, on the link side? So on the link client, you will see that there is one invitation waiting for you. And then you will see this user. And of course, this is in the new section. You will add it. So you click the plus, And for example, this needs to be an existing list. But I had a, an example here, Skype contacts. There was a, a list I created. So I add this person to this contact list, and then it will just show up in my link client, and you will see the presence without any problems. So that's from, from Skype to link. But of course, we can do it the other way around as well. So in this case, we have the link client. We actually say, I want to add something not in my organization. So let's do this. And of course, I have the, the option to use either link or either to use Skype. Because we can do federation with other companies, but we also can do federation with Skype. So in this case, we choose Skype. And of course, this needs to be the MSA account. So this needs not, this is not the Skype ID, but the Microsoft account. So on the link side, on the Skype side, sorry, you will see that we have an invitation waiting. So this person sends you a contact request, and we are going to accept. We're going to accept it. If we accept, of course, we can see the, the presence. So that's the way it works. Um, so if you cannot create a relationship between a link and a Skype client, potentially someone has changed his, his privacy settings or potentially, um, um, what's the other? Forgot the other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so let's move to 
deep presence modes. So Skype and Link have different presence modes and they are not exactly the same. So they will also translate into something different. Uh, for example, if you see a Link user on Busy, it will translate to Do Not Disturb. Well, that's not a problem. Uh, you're still able to contact uh, a person. Uh, in Link, you are not able to contact one, but um, in Skype, it doesn't really matter. But there is a, a slight difference, and I'm actually able to show you this. So let me quickly share my, my desktop. So I'm on a different machine right now. So I have four four machines to do the, all of these demos. So let's see whether the uh, desktop is coming through fine. Yes. OK. So currently, I am in presenting mode. And on the Skype site, it just says, do not disturb, which is not exactly the same, of course. So if I put it to available, it says online. So that's, that's great. If I set it to busy, it's also do not disturb. So you see, it's, it's not completely one to one. And at least, um, the most capabilities you have. For example, if you change, uh, for example, to do, to do not disturb on the Skype side, you will get the warning, of course, and the Skype client will be busy instead of do not disturb because that's the way it works. And of course, there's also an invisible, which put the Skype client offline. So let it, let's put it all back. And I'm actually going to put myself to available and change it back to the presentation. So not really sure which of the two I have to share. OK, this is the right one. So this is uh, all the, the prerequisites. So we'll a little bit deeper in the audio video conversations. So if we'll drill down into the Skype intro V1, what's all possible? So we have seen adding contacts to or Skype users to contact list, link users to contact list. Uh, I didn't show you instant messaging, but I assume you understand it is possible. And we can do peer-to-peer -peer audio calls. Also escalate IM sessions to audio and do some basic call handling like Hold, resume, mute, and mute. Now, how does this all work? And it's very important to understand that um, if you have a link on-premise deployment, you really need you really need an edge server. So without an edge server, you're not able to do anything. So edge server is really, really required. Of course, you have all the other link stuff. So for example, the link server. Uh, and of course, we need to do this federation piece. So this is all required. Um, but of course, we can also do this from Office 365. And we can even do this in a split, split configuration. So if you have both link on-premise and link online, it still works. But you have to make sure that you configure everything on the link on-premise side. So you cannot point all the records to link online. That's important. So essentially, the, the green part is how is the information going to flow? And I'm actually going to clear my screen a little bit because it will mess up a little bit the presentation. So the signaling will always flow through the link server, edge server, federation cloud to the Skype cloud. And then how does the media actually flow? Well, it flows the same direction. And that's not very optimal, but it works. So potentially, you are connecting directly to Skype client, cloud, but not essentially to the Skype client directly. So this is actually of everything we talked about until now, but it's possible. So the important thing here is the MSAs. So for the contacts, the MSAs are very important. 
you can have these capabilities, presence updates, chat, voice, but of course, we still have some, some problems here that some mobile clients don't work and video and group sessions don't work. So for version one, these are the capabilities. So now I'm going to do a call from a Skype version one client to my link client. And I will try to add video. And normally it should not work. So let me move over to my other PC. So let's share my screen again. So let's wait, still loading. Okay, now I see the screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this link user from a Skype client. So I'm using a different Skype client because otherwise it's kind of hard to explain. Um, so I'm just click the call button now. And I will get an invite. Okay, something went wrong. Let's try it again. Okay, I see. I'm still presenting, so if I'm presenting, uh, the call won't connect. So that's also something to keep in mind. Uh, so now I should get an invite. There it is. So I'm taking the call, and as you can see, this is a call. Um, of, of course, I muted the audio, um, and I'm actually going to use uh, this tool. Microsoft Message Analyzer to actually see what's going on under the hood. So I'm going to restart a, a capture. And what you see over here is the RTP. So that means the audio portion of the call. So RTP essentially means real-time transport protocol. And you see that I'm sending from my local client and receiving, of course, to some IP address, which is not from my local uh, network. Um, so we still have the call open. And I'm going to add video in this case. So I'm adding video. And it says, oh, no, video was not accepted. So this is still a version 1. So it's, it's, um, it's expected that this will not work. So let's have a look at some of the details. So I'm not sure if everyone knows about the uh, link troubleshooting tools, but Snooper, this is the Snooper tool, which allows you to look very deeply into the log files, whatever is going on on the link site. So this is essentially like a very deep dive into what can we see in link and how can we find out what's going on for an audio call, for example. So what we essentially need is the invite, which essentially says, <clears throat> we are going to set up a call. And in this invite, one of the important things here is, um, where is the contact information? Um, the user agent. Let me see, here it is. So the user agent, uh, maybe let me use the Zoomy tool. So the user agent essentially says uh, we are using a mediation server. So this is the version 1. And what else can we see? We can see that we have these codecs available uh, to contact Skype on Link, which is not so many codecs. And you will see a difference you know, in, uh, when we show the other demo. And of course, essentially, the existing codec we are going to use is G722, which is essentially in Link. Link uses this codec uh, all the time when we are doing conferencing. So usually, we're not using it for peer-to-peer -peer communication. But in the Skype versus Link interop version 1, we are essentially using this codec to do the interop. 
So let me get back to my presentation. Um, did I put up the wrong presentation? Okay. So essentially, this is a, a small explanation how you can read all of those codecs. Um, and one of the important things here, I'm going to point them out to you. So this is actually coming from the snooper log files. And I actually only placed in here, that's important. But in order to understand what you, how you can see what codecs are important is so it says 117, 114, 104. That means this is priority of the codex. So that means the priority is also in here. So here we see these values. So 117 actually means G722. In this case, of course, this is not the real capture from, from this specific, um, this specific call. So if you want to know more about how this codex selection goes through, I have a presentation from Link Conference and Tagat last year, which I'm not sure if I put link in here, but I will make sure that the link is in here. In here. You get some more information about this. So this is essentially the, um, the real call we did. So, and let me point out some of the important things here. So, this is the IP address, which was used by the Skype client. And this is the IP address used by my client. So, this IP address is essentially not my local IP, but it's my router IP, the public IP from my router. And then I can see here, these are the codecs. So, we have four codecs to choose from, which is not so much if you see the other uh, example, it will be much more. And of course, we see the mediation server piece in here. So that, that rings a bell like, okay, we know this is a version one Skype, Skype to link client. We can verify this. So this is Skype client and this is my link client. So if you look up this IP address, so this specific IP address, it's coming from somewhere in the US. And it's owned by Microsoft. So I'm living in Europe and I'm actually calling some IP address or I am sending my media packets to, to US. So in essence, I'm actually not doing an optimal call because I'm sending some media streams to US and then for the Skype client, of course, this Skype cloud needs to send some information to the Skype client. So we are actually doing a hair pinning to US and back. Uh, now, if you're living in US, it's probably not so, so big of a deal, uh, but here is where uh, Skype version two or the interop with Skype version two will make a big difference. So let's talk about that. So link and Skype interop enhancement. So we have the version one and then we have version two over here. So what do we add in version two? Of course, everything we have in version one, and then we add the video part. Now, they only talk about video in here, although it's not just video. There's so much more to talk to tell about, to talk about, because we are adding not only video. Essentially, we are doing a lot of more stuff. I will explain this. So, covering the announcement. So, Microsoft has made the announcement link and Skype video interrupt. Um, and in that same blog post, they talk about a lot of technology. I'm going to explain it a little bit, but if you go to this URL, I'm not sure when it's going to be published, but it's supposed to be today or tomorrow, I will have some explanation around that blog post. So because Microsoft has a lot of technical difficult stuff in there, but they don't explain what it is. So I'm going to do that for you. And in the blog post, you can read it afterwards. 
So we already have the version one, that's okay. And then in December 2014, we had version two. Now, one important thing to mention is that the Skype client you need is some very specific Skype client. If you don't have the right version, you will always use version one. Now, uh, currently, there seems to be a problem with the interop between Link and Skype. There was uh, an issue Microsoft discovered, and they decided to turn it off unless you have a very specific uh, Skype client, which I have, of course. So if you are going to be testing this, potentially you don't have the right client. And I'm sure Microsoft will come out with a, an ex explanation about this. Um, but expect it to be like in the coming month. Now, you really need a specific client. And I'm stressing here, at this time, it's only the Windows desktop client. So if you have any other client, it will not work. So you really need a Windows desktop client right now and a specific version. So if you don't have both of those, it's not going to work. Now, of course, they mentioned the other platforms are coming later. Um, that's true. Uh, I don't really know when. Uh, I hope it will be soon. Like, for example, the iOS clients or tablets, smartphones from various vendors. At this time, it's not going to work for video calling. But, of course, this will change soon. Now, Microsoft also talks about built-in security for the Skype client using signaling for T with TLS and SRTP for media. So, while Microsoft says this, it, it might seem irrelevant, but this is very important because Link always uses secure communication. Unless you did uh, some interrupt with Messenger before and the version one, then you have to disable some of the encryptions. But it's very important to understand that we really want this encryption. So the TLS and the SRTP, so TLS means transfer layer security and SRTP means secure real time protocol which means uh, some codecs which are secured by uh, some encryption keys. So while Microsoft doesn't really explain this, this is essentially coming from link side. So it's not specifically developed for Skype. It's coming from, from the link side. Also this piece, firewall traversal, stun turn ice, which is a very important piece of link. It's also uh, brought to the Skype client. So why do you actually need this? And I have a different slide for that, but essentially it's like if you have many firewalls and you want to make sure that you will always connect Link and Skype, Skype must understand this because Link uses this all over the place. Another thing is the H.264 SVC codec, which is an industry standard. It has been well, it's being used by, by Link 2013 for, from the beginning. And Skype has also made sure that we now understand this codec. So the one thing that is coming from Skype is essentially the Silk client. So this is coming from Skype. And essentially, it's a very good audio codec, which apparently is a little bit better than the Microsoft codec used in, in, in Link. And you might expect this codec to be more and more important in Link and certainly Skype for business. So if you want to read all of this and my explanation around this, please go to the blog post. You will really see some more information about that. So a small word about this, because I, I have to look at timing, of course. Um, I'm going to explain which are the possible candidates where we actually send the media to. And there are actually three candidates, and this is a, a stun turn and the host candidate. So what does it mean? The host candidate essentially means that my client's candidate. So a candidate is essentially an IP address and a port which we communicate with. And of course, if we use a host candidate, we are going to connect to some Skype client and we are behind a firewall, for example, we will not have any communication because the Skype client will not be able to traverse this firewall because we have a private IP address, which is not connectable from, from the outside. 
So that is why we essentially need some other candidates as well. So the stun candidate essentially is a IP address port on the firewall. So that's what you saw in the in my presentation or in the demo essentially. It was an IP address on my public router. So the, the public IP address of my router. And most likely this is this is connectable by some client. And the last candidate essentially is an IP address on the edge server. And this is essentially the last resort. If well if the previous two don't work, well, the edge server candidate will work. Well, I, I've actually never seen it not work, so unless there's really a firewall blocking everything, but that's, that should not happen. So we should always have capabilities of connecting, and that is why the net traversal, traversal mechanism is so important, because we can be anywhere. We have a, a link client. We can be on the road, in a hotel, from home, in an enterprise, at the customer site. We can do so many different things. So this is an important mechanism to understand. Uh, I'm going to skip this because this is in blog post. And let's do a video call. So I'm going to share my screen again. So let's wait until we have the screen. Going to put myself as available. I'm not going to make the same mistake here. So I'm again going to initiate a call from a Skype client. So you will see the same invite. And in this case, I also will add video. And you will see my preview coming up. And now I have, of course, also to start the video on the Skype client. And now you will see me in two sides because I have two cameras pointing at me. So I'll be waving at one camera and one at the other camera. So you see, this is working. So this is great. We have a Skype client. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's in here. There's a watermark saying Skype. And let's essentially see what's going on on the network. So let me stop this. And we see here audio. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So we see the audio, which essentially is RT audio. So it's a different codec from before. Um, this is essentially the link codec. And if we look at IP addresses, there's a big difference here. Because we essentially see that I have two different clients, and we are connecting both of these clients on the same network. Because I have a private IP address going to a private IP address with, for example, RT Audio, which is the link codec. Of course, we also use the video codec in here. Well, that is not really what I wanted to do. So we also have the SVC or the H.264 video codec, and of course, we are using the same IP addresses. So there is a, a very big difference. So remember from the first call, we had some IP address, and it was located in US. So for me, that was not a very efficient call. And if we look at some of the invites, so this is the same invite as before, but then for a version 2 client. Um, so let me find the user agent. So the user agent is over here. So it says link Skype Gateway 2. So it's a version 2 link to Skype Gateway. So we already see there's a difference in here. And then if you look at all the codecs, you see a long list of codecs. So there are more there are more possibilities. So I'm not going to explain all of those codecs, but you see uh, where this is coming from. And of course, we had the audio portion. We also have the video portion. So this was not available in the other invite for version 1, because there was no possibility of doing video. 
So in this case, we see there are other video streams uh, or codecs available as well. And actually, it might be a little bit of a surprise, but there is still, so you see the RT map 112, that's essentially the 264 codec, which is being used now. And the 121, which is over here, this is essentially the the link 2010 codec. So this is actually a good thing. So we can actually call the link 2010 client as well. Sorry. So let's go back to the presentation. So we did the video, and now the difference will be visible over here. So essentially, we have the same um, same drawing, and of course, signaling. If we have the signal between Skype and Link, they will always follow the same path, also in version two. But the media stream essentially goes directly between the Link client and the Skype client, which is much much better. So uh, I'm not going to read all of this um, but in here you will see that okay let me go one bit so the audio portion is a little bit different from the version one and it, we see here the additional uh, video codecs and of course the Skype gateway version 2 we still have the Skype ID the link ID and of course, we see the IP addresses in here, um, this one. So this is an example. This, this was not an actual call you saw before, but this is an example. So there's a very big difference. And if we then look at the world map again, so if you remember, um, we had to go back and forth to US to do the link Skype interop. Now we actually don't have to do that anymore because we are sending the media directly between Link and Skype. So that's much more efficient than before. Now, it says Silk. Um, it's supposed to be Silk, but at the current implementation, we're actually using the Microsoft code for Link. Um, but expect this to be Silk somewhere in the future, because Silk will be more, more important. Um, some of the important details here, for example, is that you can have both version 1 and version 2 clients and because I'm doing it right now. So I'm logged in with the same Skype ID into two different versions of the Skype client. And if I'm calling from one Skype client, which is version 1, it will just connect to the version 1 gateway. And the version 2 Skype client will connect to the version 2 with all the capabilities. So. That, that's actually quite nice that you can have multiple Skype clients with multiple uh, functionality. Now, this is also kind of a summary. And, well, still the MSAs are important here. Um, so we add voice with Silk. Well, voice was there, but it was not using Silk. And actually, in reality, not right now, but expect this to be. We add video, we add encryption, and we add net reversal. So all of these things are important. Um, but there is a big but, and probably this is somewhere for in the future. So most of the mobile clients won't have Skype interrupt, and essentially the multi-party calls. So at this time, Skype cannot join link meeting. But we might expect this to change anytime soon. So in regards to support on platforms, um, so this is actually an old slide I got from one of the presentations from last year, which is not completely correct. Uh, but it, of course, we have the uh, Windows 32 client. It says summer time frame, but it's supposed to be last summer. Um, so the Mac client is not there yet. So potentially, it is going to be summer. And you see all the other clients which are going to be released. So 
Windows Modern client, so the the new client, which essentially is different from the desktop client, iOS, Android, Windows 8, Xbox. I really want to see the Xbox uh, client because uh, I have an Xbox. I would be I, I would love to do a video call with my Xbox. And then, of course, from the from the link side, essentially what I didn't tell you was um, for link. Essentially, this one. Link already has support for Silk for a long time. Now, okay, the current implementation is that the Skype client uses some of the media stack from Link, so it is able to do the Link 2010 and OCS calls. But expect this, all these other clients to, to come out soon. So this is just a screenshot from the legacy clients, which I call Link 2010 and OCS. But at this time, we can just do the Skype video, audio and video interrupt just fine because we are using the most of the link uh, codecs. So the legacy link codecs, both for audio, for video, um, so they're all working. So that's essentially quite nice. So this brings me to the end of my presentation. I do have some resources uh, for you and definitely to check out my two blog posts on eNow. And I'm probably going to give the word back to Julie now. Thank you, Johan, for the excellent presentation. It looks like we have some questions from the audience. It looks like we have some time for some questions from the audience. Before we start the Q&A session, we wanted to make sure everyone is aware of a special offer for our link monitoring and reporting solution, Uniscope. Any company that makes a purchase in the month of January or February is eligible for a 25% off discount. Please use promo code I love link. So now if anyone has any questions, please enter them in the text box and we'll be answered, answering them accordingly. While we wait for some questions, Johan, do you have any additional thoughts? Um, yeah, so I think the, the important thing to understand is this is still a work in progress, and unfortunately, currently, the, uh, the implementation is a little bit on hold, and I hope Microsoft will come out soon with a solution, uh, and certainly, I am very interested in seeing all the other clients coming out, uh, most likely the iOS clients, the Android clients, and any of those, and of course, then, in the longer future, looking at Skype for Business, this is going to be very, very awesome uh, because we will have a, a Skype client and a Skype for Business client, which will be very similar alike. So they will essentially uh, look very similar. And then the advantage for a user is, of course, if you know Skype and then suddenly your business decides to implement Link or Skype for Business, of course, you will get a very similar interface, and then the learning curve will be will be very short. So that's also quite important, I guess. Thank you, Johan. Well, it looks like there are no questions. So with that, we want to thank everyone for participating, and thank you for joining. Thanks, Johan. Okay, no problem.